Hello everyone, this is Mundan Dagavan. This video we are going to learn about typecasting in Java. So generally typecasting is nothing but converting one type to another type required for the scenario. The typecasting can be applicable for the primitive data types as well as the non-primitive data types. When you think about the primitive data types, we know that it will be like a byte, short, integer, long, float, double, and characters. So what are the different scenarios that you will be doing for the typecasting? There will be only two scenarios, whether you will be going to the lower level to higher level or higher level to lower level. For example, if you see here, we have the different data types like byte, short, integer, long, float, double. If you see from your right hand side, the byte will have only the memory of one byte of memory, where a short will have two and integer will be having four and long will be having eight and so on, right? So that means that the more you go on your right hand side, you will be having more memory and more precision and you will be having more range. Just to recollect our previous primitive data types, we are going to just see. So what are the different sizes for the different primitive data types? So here we can clearly understand byte will be having one byte and short will have double of that two bytes and integer will be having four and long will be having eight. Again, float and double will be like a decimal points, whereas float will be having four bytes and double will be having eight bytes and will be having more precision when compared to the float. But if you see overall structure here, all will be dealing with the, most of the scenarios will be with the numbers. Either it can be the full numbers or it will be the fractional numbers. And Boolean we are not considering for the typecasting. Whereas character can be considered because internally character will be converted into the numeric value or ASCII value based on the character. It can be any language. So to represent the language also, we are using the two bytes. So that's the reason it will not be having one byte, it will be having two bytes. Now coming back to our slideshow. So if you see from your left hand side to right hand side, you are increasing the memory size. That means that if you have some value of byte, no matter where you put into the higher level, short, integer, long, float, we will not be going to the float and double maximum times. If you put it into the higher levels, which hold the same kind of numeric data, but those ranges will be greater than the current range. For example, byte will be lesser than the short. So a shorter will be having more space for the byte data. So there will not be any issue for that. But however, this concept will be called as a widening. Why? Because you are widening the memory area, even though you have the less data. Sometimes if you change, or let's say if you have the reference variable for the larger space, let's consider the example integer value or integer variable, which can hold short and byte as well. If you just give some variable value of short to the integer variable, it will hold it because it will be called as a widening or it will be done implicitly by the Java side. So there is no harm in the memory or no harm in the losing the data. So that's the reason it will be done implicitly by the Java itself. So in general, if you see the diagram, if you move from left to right, it will be easier or it will be called widening and it will be done by the Java implicitly. Whereas if you consider the large data to the lower memory area, for example, if you have the long value and if you are trying to put it into the byte, obviously, it will not be done automatically. The developer has to do manually. Even if you do also, there may be a possibility that you can lose the data. In simple, if you consider the long, it will be having the maximum range of some numbers. But if you consider the byte, it will be having only minus 127 to 128. If you are trying to keep the value of long value to the byte, you can keep it by doing manual casting or explicit casting, but still you will lose the data. So generally we will avoid the narrowing or the explicit casting, but widening or implicit casting will be useful in some scenarios. But however, casting is possible in both the directions. So this is overall about the casting in case of primitive data types. If you think about the non-primitive data types, that will be totally different concept that we will discuss in the next video. Now, so far we have seen this concept, so we will understand in practical by doing something on the JSL. So by seeing the diagram, you can understand the byte can be saved into the byte variable or it can be saved into the short integer long. No matter, you have the larger level, so the data will be safe and you don't need to do anything explicit casting. So to prove that point, let's create some byte data. And by this time, we will be knowing what's the limit for that. For byte, you can have the value from minus 128 to 127 plus. 
So let's consider byte B is equal to 120. So now we have the value of byte. So now if you try to just put it into some short variable or integer or long, you will not get any error and it will be automatically casted by the Java itself. For example, let's see short S is equal to B. So we will not have any problem. Let's say for example, integer N equal to B. So here also no problems. The same for the long L equal to B. So till now we don't have any problems because we are doing the widening and even we are not doing the tap type casting by ourselves, it will be done implicitly. The next point will be the downcasting or let's say the narrowing. So for example, let's consider we are creating some value from the, so even we can do for the float and double for the upcasting as well. We will see that one. So let's say float f is equal to, let's say 12.30 f enter. Now I'm trying to put it into the higher level, which is double, double D is equal to F. So there is no issue. Even we will get more precision in case if you just doing the widening for the double variable. So the value from the float value will be just going to the double, which will be the larger area for the memory point of view. So now we will go to the narrowing or the explicit casting. So for example, we will go for the integer or we will create the long variable and we will try to put something into the lower level, which are like integer or short or byte. So for the long, to have a real picture, we will go with the higher value. So long, we can save this much value, right? So rather than typing this one, we have something called the wrapper classes. For example, let's say long dot max value. Or it should be only the first one long dot max value. So here you can see by using the wrapper classes, we will see detail what is wrapper classes, but rather than going to get the different data from the Google or browsers, you can directly use the wrapper classes to see the maximum and minimum value. Or the same one you can use for integer, float, everything. The only difference is the first letter would be the caps to represent the wrapper class. For example, here you can see min value. So this will be the minimum value in the range of long variable. So for that point, let's say we will create long, let's say e equal to long max value. Fine, just print that one. So here we have, again printing, sorry, it's the e variable, right? Let me clear again e. Okay, fine. So which means that now the long variable E holding the maximum value of the long range, right? So now if you try to typecast to lower value, for example, let's say I'm going to typecast into integer. Integer C is equal to E. So you will be getting the error like incompatible types, possibly lossy conversion for long to int. So it's telling that you have the larger area or, or let's say huge number which from the long type, but you are trying to convert into the integer, which will be the lower type. So because of that, you will lose the data or you will use the conversion or let's say precision of the data in case of float and double. Still, if the developer wants to do that, we can do that by using the explicit conversion. Integer C is equal to, we are converting. So whatever the type you want to convert from any other type, you will be mentioning the type that you want to convert. For example, here we want to convert into int. And after that, we are mentioning the variable name, which is nothing but E. Here you can see you are getting some different values C because the larger value that you have in E variable, when you convert into the integer, it will be losing the precision and it will be like a yeah, overflowing. For example, if you take like a real world example, let's consider this picture itself. Widening, you can see, there will be the different cups or let's say different memory area you can consider. If you put the value or the, let's say, the amount of water from the small class to the bigger classes, you will not have any problem because you have more area to hold that water from the small class. Whereas if you do in the reverse way, let's say if you are taking from the bigger class and you are trying to pour into the small class, you will be filling the class, but still you will be overflowing something or it will be splitted outside, right? So that's the reason we will be avoiding the narrowing. So that's the reason here also, we will be getting some different kind of issue here. We will not get the actual data or we will lose the data in some times as well. But there are some scenarios you may not get any issues, something like, for example, let's say even long, R equal to 
I will be having very small value, which is type of, uh, which is in the range of the byte. Fine. Now, if I convert into integer, I will not be having any problem. Still, I will be asked to typecast manually, but still I will be lose. I will not be losing anything. See, whenever you do the narrowing, you will be getting the error like that. Still, you can do it. But in some scenario where you have very less value in the larger type, for example, R has the 120 value, which is in the byte range only, but still we were holding in the long range, right? So let's say I'm just doing that explicit type conversion int and value is from R. Still here you can see there is no loss because it has a very less value. So we need to be very careful when we do the downcasting or say narrowing or explicit conversion because in runtime or let's say in the future, if the limit increases beyond that one, so you will be losing the data. So in nutshell, we will be we will be knowing that. So whenever you do the implicit casting, you don't need to worry about anything because it will be having no impact on the memory or the data point of view. But when you do the narrowing, you should be careful because you may lose the data itself. Moreover, if you see in the type casting primitive data types. So you will be seeing most of the time will be in the memory point of view, right? So here you are seeing range, let's say byte, two byte, four byte, eight byte. So in that scenario, you will be seeing. Whereas the typecasting in point of, let's say non-primitive data types that is totally different that we will be seeing in the next session. So this is all about the typecasting for the primitive data types. So thanks all, thanks for watching and have a great day.